Good morning, class. Our topic for today is Deep Seas and Depositional Systems. I'm your lecturer, Dr. Sandra G. Katane. Sediment inputs from the terrestrial and shallow marine environments, driven by processes such as uh, fluvial, glacial, aeolian, are transported across the shelf. Surface current transport is the main conveyor of sediments to deeper oceans. Other sediments are transported subarially by wind currents such as aeolian transport and volcanic ash from volcanoes. The edge of a continental margin or the upper part of the slope is a site for initiation and recharging of the sedimentation processes. Sediments are conveyed via slides, the suspension, slope erosion, and direct sediment discharge. At the continental slope, processes such as density currents are common, but at the same time, settling or deposition from suspension, both clastic and biogenic, are also co occurring. There are two main processes, turbidity currents and hem hemipelagic processes. Beyond the hem hemipelagic um, area, three processes are predominant. Um, this is the area where you have pelagic sedimentation, bottom current, and chemogenic uh, deposition prevails. This is another model. We call it the box model uh, to illustrate the different processes in the deep sea. This box model of deep sea sedimentation shows the different processes of the various types of deposits produced. Notice that in the pelagic zone, the dominant sediment is ooze and transported clays and the main process of deposition is settling. However, more recent studies have shown that turbidity currents contribute sediment significantly in the pelagic setting. Classification of pelagic sediments. Pelagic sediments are classified based on the ratio of the three main components, namely calcareous microfossils, siliceous microfossils, and non-biogenic components, including clay. Biogenic sediments are either calcareous or siliceous or non-biogenic clay. Settling is the primary mode of deposition for the, for the sediments. So we have on this end oozes and towards the non-biogenic side are clays consisting of silt and mud. The carbonate compensation depth or CCD, marks the water depth at which settling calcium carbonate sediments dissolve at precisely the same rate as it is supplied from the photic zone. Calcareous oozes accumulate only above the CCD. Below it, carbon or cal rather calcium carbonate dissolves. The map shows the heterogeneous and glacial deposits are found adjacent to continents and land masses, whereas calcareous and siliceous sediments and deep sea clay are found in the deeper part of the ocean floor. This is a cross-section showing the stratigraphy of the Pacific Basin 
the location of the crest cross section is here. The substrate is basalt, as expected, and it is thickest as uh, you go closer to the East Pacific rise, but further away to the northwest, in that direction, the sediment capping is composed of thicker deep sea deep sediments consisting of calcareous oozes to deep sea clay to calcareous siliceous ooze with minor volcanogenic sediments. These are present day pelagic oozes viewed from the submersible Alvin in the oceanographic fracture zone, central North Atlantic. The long tray and some of the some burrows were made by unidentified organisms. These are some micro images of some pelagic uh, oozes. Um, these are viewed under the microscope. These are also examples of church and siliceous sediment. Church is a general term for fine grain siliceous sediments that may be chemically, biochemical, or biogenic in origin. Three major groups of organisms that secrete siliceous tests or skeletons are regularians, diatoms, and sponges or spicules. This is a bedded chert and folded as well. On the right side, the photo shows um, nodular cherts, and these are products of deep sea sedimentation. A lot of sedimentation processes occur in the deep sea realm, from rock falls, creep, slide, slump, along the continental margin or at the top of the continental slope. These processes are similar to their terrestrial counterparts. These flows are capable of keeping their integrity as dry flows without mixing with seawater up to some distance from the point of origin. When they start to mix with seawater, they transition to wet flows like debris flows or more water-rich flows such as turbidity currents. Meanwhile, suspension deposition processes coexist as, a, as fine, fine sediments remain suspended for some time in the water column. Thus, current derived sediments and de settling derived sediments normally are interbedded in deep sea sequences. This diagram shows the transition from the shallower part of the continental shelf and as you go deeper into the deep ocean, you can see the transition from this uh, type of sedimentation to the more pelagic type or settling type of uh, sedimentation, including flocculation and pelletization. So you can also see the transition of the type of uh, deposits that are formed uh, with the, as, you, as, as you go to the deeper parts of the ocean. This is another way to illustrate the different processes and deposits in the deep sea environment. Although this is a bit more chaotic, but it shows the different uh, ways to produce the deposit and the different phases that can be found in the ocean floor. During the flow initiation, flows are generated with varying range of sediment concentration from dry rock fall to rivers and glacial plumes. 
The low vertical arrow shown here on the left shows the decreasing concentration of sediment but increasing fluid turbulence. For long distance transport, flows start to incorporate seawater, changing flow rheology and turning them to more fluid turbidity currents. The positional phases including rockfall, creep, and slump are common at the continental slope, but turbidite phases are more characteristic of the median to distal parts of the submarine fan. Uh, this area is already part of the continental rise. Debrite, which is a product of debris flow deposition, is a transition deposit to more organized turbidite deposits. This is a seismic reflection profile of Nova Scotia showing the different sedimentary phases. So this area is the continental slope. So you have here uh, landslides, rock falls, and uh, creep as uh, common processes and deposits. We also have here at the lower part of your slope the some slump masses. And laterally, as you move away from the continental slope to the part of continental rise, you get more of the typical pelagic sediments, including the distal, medial to distal uh, phases of turbidites. Submarine fan morphology. The submarine fan is normally dominated by turbidite deposits. It can form several depositional lobes like this, and to some extent, um, the submarine fan is similar to an alluvial fan or uh, even a river dominated delta in terms of form. In this uh, black diagram, you can see the different features of the continental slope and continental rise, and uh, also the processes. Um, so you can see there's spatial distribution, even the direction of currents, this deep canyon here, are described in this um, quite simple diagram. This is a submarine fan. It's normally dominated by turbidites or turbidite deposits. It can form several depositional lobes. To some extent, it is similar to an alluvial fan or a river-dominated delta in terms of form. This um, submarine fan shows the proximal medial and distal phases of a turbidite deposit. Sediment gravity flows are mixtures of water and sediment particles where gravity acting on the sediment particles moves the fluid in contrast to rivers where the fluid moves the particles. Gravity flows are used to describe the major flow types involved in resedimentation processes wherein sediment fluid mixture, the, the interstitial fluid is driven by the grains moving under the action of gravity. Sediment gravity flows are special type of flows that have behaved differently from a normal river flow. They contain 20% to 70% sediment. They have high density and high fluid viscosity. Turbidity currents are gravity-driven turbid mixtures of sediment temporarily suspended in water. They are less dense mixtures than debris flows. Initial scar occurs due to turbulent entrainment of unconsolidated substrate at high current velocity as flow decreases, flow velocity decreases due to loss of minimum momentum, 
finer particles are deposited under low flow regime conditions. High sediment concentration commonly results in climbing ripples. Final deposition occurs under suspension settling mode with hemapelagic layers. Many turbidite deposits uh, originate as sediment gravity flows but transition to more dilute flows of lower density sediment concentration as they move laterally. In the same diagram, you can see the grain size distribution of the deposits within a classical turbidite, as well as the designated codes for these uh, layers of the turbidite from TA, TB, TC until TE. And this is the these are the structures that are formed based on Boma's um, diagram, and this is the interpretation in terms of the process, or and in also include the the energy of the the process. This is a, a diagram showing turbidity current and submarine fans. Similar to the earlier diagrams, uh, this shows uh, at least two lobes produced by, by turbidity currents. The sediments are transported down from the canyon and different phases are formed. TA and TB, um, you can also refer from the previous slide they are normally found at the upper or proximal part of the fan, close to the canyon, whereas flow lobes um, TD and TE are deposited at the fringes of the fan. Next is um, a diagram showing the stratigraphic lugs at different locations of the submarine fan. It, so, it shows the variation of turbidite phases with distance from the source. A turbidite deposit several in centimeters to meters in thickness. So you can have a BOMA sequence, which is only a few centimeters thick, so you or you have uh, a, a several meters thick of, of deposits from a single turbidite. This sequence may repeat many times. This outcrop shows a series of massive beds in a turbidite deposit. It, is, it exhibits a series of graded beds here and here and here. And it can be part of TA. This is the outcrop where this close-up photo was taken. These are nicely bedded proximal turbidites. These thick layers are made up of sand and the dark thin layers are made up of silt and clay. These are proximal turbidites. The next one is a distal turbidite. So you can see the difference in terms of grain size and thickness of beds. These are very thinly bedded distal turbidites. Supplementary slides and readings on sediment gravity flows. It is a, it is an enigma actually, I mean to discuss um, sediment gravity flows and I listed here two readings that you can look at if you want to understand more about gravity flows. The first one being by Ghani in 2004, from turbid to lucid, a straightforward approach to sedimentary uh, sediment gravity flows and their deposits published in the sedimentary record in 2004. There's another paper that was published earlier by the group Das Gupta in 2003, Sedimentary Gravity Flow, The Conceptual Problems. Uh, it is published in Earth Science Reviews, so you can try to, to look this up. 
So uh, this is about the first paper. It's about the first paper by by Gani. There are some guide questions that we, we have been asking um, from the class ever since, and which you, which you can answer by yourselves. In case we have a chance to go to the field, and you can find or we see turbidite deposits in several outcrops, then maybe you have a chance to discuss or um, among those outcrops, which is the one that's a legitimate, sort of a legitimate deposit. The next, the succeeding slides are for are meant for you to go through if you um, have more time. And that's the end of our lecture on deep sea environments. Thank you for coming to class. And thank you for listening.